before you even came to 2019, Jesus already had financial schedules for your life. If you take a note, write this down, financial schedules, divine financial schedules. Now, divine financial schedules don't have nothing to do with your work. It don't have nothing to do with your um, your education. It don't got nothing to do with um, the standards of man. It don't have nothing to do with that. Divine financial schedules have everything to do with your boldness to step out with the Holy Spirit and follow his instructions concerning money. It don't have nothing to do with where you work, how much they pay you, how much you get in a week. Because how many of y'all know when you, you know what you're going to get paid every week. All right, I work this here. Let me drag the F. All right, drag the S. Okay, let me get that. There's a two, there's a 20. All right, I know I'm about to make that because they gave me four hours today. All right, when I got four hours two weeks ago, this is what I came out with. All right, I got overtime, two hours overtime. This is what I come out when I get two hours overtime. All right, you can't tell me no, never mind. You can't tell me no, never mind. All right, I get this. All right, and this is why I come out, drag the, the, the S uh, minus square um, plus 25. All right, and they always give you seven cents on the side. And they always give you seven cents. Say, all right, buy lunch. All right, lunch is about four dollars. I'm buying the same thing. I'm going to buy the same thing. I no, I ain't buying nobody no more lunch. I'm going to buy the same thing. And when I'm finished, it's going to come out to this. There's a realm with Jesus where he break the protocol of what your salary is. Anybody can touch that if you sow the way the Holy Spirit wants you to sow. You know, I often laugh, saints, because when people say, oh, look at him, look at him, look at him. When I laugh, because I'm the same one that sold my way out. You know why I laugh? I laugh because ha, ha, ha. I found out that honor is the parent of success. That's what I found out. Honor is the parent of success. How I get to this point? Jesus loved talking to me. If he want to talk to anybody, he can't come to some of y'all houses. Y'all up there want to talk about when is this going to happen? And I, I'm praying for this and I'm petitioning you. Oh, God. Oh, God, I need you to come through. Jesus, like, all right. Let me go over here by my son, Prophet Joshua Holmes. I'm going to go over by the king. The king just going to respect me. He just going to praise me. He just going to thank me. He just going to rejoice. He ain't up there asking me for no money. He ain't asking me for no provision. He ain't asking me for nothing. No booty. No. He ain't asking me for nothing. You know? I need five people to share this broadcast. I like vests like this, man. This vest is fleeky. I saw this in a vision. This is the Holy Spirit told me to get this vest. I was sitting on the couch. He said, get the vest. It's so funny. You know what the Holy Spirit told me? He said, get the trapper vest. <laughs> I said, Holy Ghost, what you know about the trapper? He said, get the trapper vest. <laughs> you think the Holy Spirit don't be knowing stuff. The Holy Spirit is a, he is a genius. He is a genius. It's the police calling me. <laughs> Since y'all love me, if I went to jail, who, who would come visit me if I went to jail? It's like I'm playing around. Police better not call my phone. I won't answer. <laughs> one thing that I want you to 
One thing I want you to catch is that the power of God to get riches it takes a person to be sold out in the mysteries of God to get to that realm. It takes a person to be sold out. You got to really fear God. You can't be somebody because once he going to put that heavy amount of money in your hands, you can't be somebody that switches out and sell out and betray God. Like you, you got to be all in. You understand? And then let me tell you something. When Jesus start pitting money in your hand, you got to be somebody that's reliable because he don't want to have to wait 20 weeks to get a simple instruction done. You understand? He don't want to have to wait 20 weeks. Everybody share me. Share me. It was Kung Fu fighting. But it was Kung Fu. I mean, y'all would buy my mixtape if I came out with it. I mean, y'all would buy my mixtape if I came out with it.
Come out with a mixtape called T-Mobile Milk. T-Mobile Milk. Up here drinking that T-Mobile Milk. The power of God to get riches is in your fear of God. You got to really fear God for him to put wealth in your hands because he got to know that you into the kingdom being promoted. He got to know that you will invest the money into the kingdom. He got to know that for sure. Since I've dealt with amounts of money that I knew I couldn't, I couldn't touch it. I knew that it was for God. And then my meeting would bounce over double that. My meeting will be way over that. And I would say, okay, that's amazing. Because the Holy Spirit knew that ahead of time. That the money was for the work of God. It wasn't for shopping. It wasn't for nothing. If you're going to make those type of adjustments, you got to be trained. You got to be In the fear of God to even be training, you got to be in the fear of God for him to trust you with that amount of abundance, because it's so easy when you get abundance to make plans for it. One time I asked you, what would you do with $50,000? Some of y'all say, I buy a house, I buy this stuff. All them answers is wrong. (laughs) You can't get no house with no $50,000. What's wrong with you? $50,000 $50,000 ain't no money, ain't no house for no, ain't no money, money for no house. $50,000, is, $50,000 is, 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 is seed money. What happened? You sold 50000 What if you get 50 million? Who won? You won. Don't take the 50000 and go buy a harvest. You, listen. $50,000 seem real big to you when you ain't got no money. I promise you. But saints, I promise you, if you want to accomplish something for God, you can't even accomplish it with no $50,000. You, you're doing something big for the Lord. You find out $50,000 finish in two minutes. You're like, oh, shoot. <laughs> hey, who, who robbed me? Who robbed me? No, it wasn't no... Th- Listen, it wasn't that amount, sir. Nah, I have $50,000. Well, this, this cost this much... No, all right, all right. Johnny Cochran, that when you need him, you need a lawyer to defend you in this matter because this is this is the discrepancy. This is cataclysmic. That's my new word, cataclysmic. The money bags of Jesus is governed by the minister of finances, and the minister of finances has mastered getting large money to so many people, from Abraham to Adam to uh, Esther, to Ruth, um, to Deborah. Remember, Deborah was a, a judge in the Old Testament. You remember all these people were respons- responsible to God. So here, here's, here's what I want you to see. With, with me saying that they're responsible to God, this is what you got to catch. They had the ability to respond to God with money. They wasn't stubborn. They wasn't selfish. They wasn't foolish. They knew how to unlock God with the seed. My God. See, saints, I want you to understand. We, 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 you know, we talk about God unlocking you and God getting you out and God bringing you forth. But Jesus looking for somebody that can unlock him. That can inspire him to make them rich like he made Solomon rich and even richer. Because even though Solomon was labeled as a king that there'll be no one like him. Jesus said there's one greater. There's a one standing here greater. Ah, There's a one greater here. There's a one greater than Solomon standing in front of you. So we got a king that's greater than Solomon inside of us. You got the king inside of you, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, the one that was over Solomon. So you got the capacity to be richer than Solomon. Because if he greater than Solomon, Solomon was amazingly rich. They drunk out of gold cups. Their house was made of gold. 
Imagine a gold house. I saw a mansion in heaven that belonged to me. It was Rose Gold House with diamonds on it. I've seen so much stuff that it, if I was to tell you what I've seen, you'll, you'll tell me that I'm lying. Because the spirit realm is more realer than this realm. The saints, why do you think I'm wild the way I'm wild? Because I be getting crowns. I take that little hit for a little while. You, you can broadcast my video all over. Hit me. Hit me. Hit, hit me, baby, one more time. I be just like Britney Spears. I don't be worried. I let them flex on me. Flex on me. Hit me, baby, one more time. Because every time you hit me, I, I get another I get another B flex in the spirit. I don't be worried. Get me another mansion in the spirit. I'll be like, all right, go on with you. Go on, do it. Go on, do it, player. Go on, do it, player. Nah, because I got to get that mansion. I got to get my weight up. The Bible said left treasures in heaven. Every time you get persecuted, every time you get rejected, every time you go through a little son, 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 son. The Holy Spirit is adding on to your inheritance. You understand? The Holy Ghost is looking to extend your inheritance. I love that. If you take a note, write this down. Take this phrase down. I heard it in the Holy Ghost. Inheritance extension. Inheritance extension. I had a little joke one time I was in the elevator. I was <laughs> I was handling some business. It, it, there was the people in there, they were they they were obviously, you know, they was a little gone. Yeah, a little girl, she, the woman was with her man. She was with her man. They were the weird thing. It, it was an awkward moment. Cause then she was like, ooh, little baby over there. Like, little baby. <laughs> now this is a true story. Ooh, little baby over there. The brother said, the brother said that she was with, there was her man. He said, As a matter of fact, that is little baby. He got two watches on. <laughs> now, now look. Hey, hey, since this is so funny. So the young lady proceeded to put her hand on my arm. I said, get your hands up for me, girl. What is this your nigga? This this is your nigga, right? <laughs> is this your nigga? Cause if this is your nigga, we got dun, 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 dun. My brother was all right with. It. He said, "No, you all right, you little baby." <laughs> I thought about it. What if sweets was not for your sanctification? Now she had a mustache and a beard. I ain't. That was a baby wolf. That's what it was. A baby wolf. A wolf. A wolf. That's what it was. It was a wolf. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 6. Blessings are upon the head of the just. Blessings are upon the head of the just. You know what that means? It's on your head. It's on your decision making. Catch this. This is powerful how I'm, how, how I'm revealing this to you. Because it's not, it's a, it's a parable. It's not just in the text. I'm explaining it to you. Blessings are upon the head of the just. You know what the head is? Your decisions. So there's a there's a prosperity anointing on your decisions. You got to get that in your mind first. No, don't look at your bank account because your bank account is your skank account. 
is a skank and stank. Look at your heavenly account. Look at your heavenly account. Because God got money that's heavenly and heavenly. Heavy money. Oh, saints, if you're on this line, say, Father, I receive heavy money. Oh, no, nah. because you thought that you're supposed to be heavy with stress. The only thing you're supposed to be heavy with is money. The only thing you're supposed to be heavy with is the money bags of Jesus. That's the only heaviness. That's the only heaven, he, 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 heaviness that you're supposed to have on you is the wealth anointing, the money anointing. Saints, Adam was so happy in the garden. He wasn't thinking about all this nonsense that, that you think about today. Oh, I'm going to pay this bill. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Adam wasn't thinking about none of that bull crap. All Adam was thinking about was, what am I going to buy next? Ooh. What I'm going to do next? I got, this. I got bands all over me. This is what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I got, shoot, I'm going to go over here to this river, her villa. Mm -hmm. Then when I get over to her villa, I'm going to crank that and go over over here to the stream. Huh? It got four heads, huh? huh? Yeah, yeah. I got three-headed snake just like young gunner and, 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 and young thug. Uh-huh. And and I, I, I'm, about to, I'm about to go over here. All right, I'm about to enjoy my day today. All right, I'm not going to be up there worried about none of the discrepancies that happen in the garden around 5 a.m. and then 5, 5, 6, and 6, 7, 8 a.m. in the morning. I'm not worried about none of those stuff. I'm going to be sleeping. And then I'm going to pray to God. I'm going to wake up. And then, boom, one day God gave him some hips. He said, oh, Jesus, look at this. Oh, Jesus. And, and God said, it's not good for man to be alone. And Adam said, you're daggone right. You're daggone right, Lord. I wasn't going to say nothing, but you answered my prayer before I gave it to you. I wasn't going to say nothing to you, but you ended up giving me the prayer that, that I was thinking about before you even uh, brought it to my attention. I thought about it, but since you gave it to me, I just want to tell you thank you because it was a confirmation of what I was already feeling inside of my heart, but I just didn't say it verbally. It was a verbatitiously with my mouth. I said it verbatitiously with my spirit with my heart i said it inwardly it wasn't nothing that came out of me it was something that was inside of me and i just brought it out you pulled it out and i'm pulling out myself and you know and don't think about it blessings are upon the head of the just watch this here so in your decisions you got prosperity on your decisions. Watch this here. I want you to remember this phrase. Prosperity decisions. Why do you think the Holy Ghost start talking to you about sowing? Why do you even think that he put a zeal on you to sow? Or a hunger on you to sow? Or an appetite to sow? That's, that's the side effect of wealth. Seed symptoms. Seed symptoms. Do you know when the side effect of wealth is on you? That's when you start sowing out of your outside of your intellect. Your intellect like, girl, stop. Hey. Shh. Shh. Intellect. Shh. Intellect. Because. Wealth is overpowering your life. See, you think that wealth is just you have an abundance. You, wealth is you thinking abundance. It's where your mind is in the overflow. You catching this? Wealth is when your mind is in the overflow. 
Think about this. Your mind has crossed over from death, debt, to debt cancellation. Your mind done crossed over from lack to stack. You done left famine to become a financial cannon. Weapons of mass production is in the seed. Weapons of mass production is in the seed. When you truly are a sower, God won't even let your mind think small. You'll be acting like you're rich and you're still in the same apartment naturally. You're still living with somebody naturally and you up there got the mind of a billionaire. Because Jesus changed your mind before he changed the physicality of your bank account. You got the joy of somebody that's rich. That you don't got everything settled. Why? Because you in the spirit realm. When you functioning in the spirit, you already got abundance. You already got wealth. You already got riches. You not in the same vein as everybody else. You different. You unique. The Holy Spirit will graduate you from one seed to the next. Every time you sow. He'll graduate you from one seed to the next. You'll know when your level is changing because you'll get bored with the seed amount. Let me just say this. I'm going to shock you. If all you become is a tither, You'll become boring to God. Donna, say that one more time. Say that one more time. Hold on. I got to read your comment. Hold on. Let me get back glasses. Let me get back glasses. What you say? 800 to... I, I need to uh, reciprocate. You told me to repeat myself yesterday. Now I get you back. In time for you to repeat yourself. What did you say? $800 to $1,700... Uh, what was that? You don't get no tip. You don't get no tip. You just give lip. I need to understand what you were saying out there. You can repeat your statement one more time and re 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 recycle it. Recycle it. Do it quickly. All right. You got to understand. Lord asked me to do $800 seed to break open my wealth anointing. Now, $1,700 seed is in my spirit. Well, daughter, I'm going to tell you that right now. Go with the $1,700. Don't let the devil is a muck liar. The devil is a muck beep liar. Then go on with the $1,700. Shoot. Yeah, go on to the $1,700. Bump I eight the $800. <laughs> If all you become is a tither all your life, you become boring to God. You know that, right? Why? Because tithing is a training ground. Is where you date in God. Sowing is where y'all get married. That's why sowers often operate like they married. Hello. 
That's why sowers got the commitment, the dedication, the attentiveness, the hospitality, the helpfulness. As if they married, because sowing is where you marry God. So even when you don't know it, when you start sowing strong, you take on the mindset of somebody married. So when people start talking about your man of God, hold up, nigga. I know that, uh, <laughs> I know I called you over here, but nigga, you got to leave. <laughs> no, you don't understand what I'm saying. It's called, don't let the door hit you with the good Lord split you. <laughs> no, I, I'm smiling, but I'm really wilding. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah, you got two seconds. Uh, five. <laughs> I'm going to give you three seconds added on in advance. Uh, four. <laughs> three. <laughs> You're going to be like Emmett Till when he hung on the tree. Two. Uh, one. Get, boom, boom, boom. You done, you done, shots done fired. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just shots done fired all over the place. You got gunshots all over the apartment. They don't know what happened. And call 911. They don't know what happened. That white clip, John. Someone please call 911. So I think Juan was in that song because he said, Wong Wong. <laughs> white clip, John was calling my son back then. The devil tried to get his life. See there? The devil were plotting against him back then. Someone please call 911. <laughs> You'll see your seed levels change because the Lord want to do something strange financially for you. So there's prosperity decisions and there's inheritance Extension. God want to extend your inheritance and give you more than what you think you need. Because God ain't dealing with your need. He's dealing with your seed. And your seed is a governor over all God's benefits. If I sow out of my mind, God gives me wealth out of his mouth. There's a weapon in my seed to stop all serpent activity. It was the serpent that stopped the flow of money from getting to Adam. So when I sow, I'm being restored back to the gold status. Gold. Gold, heavy money. When I sow, I'm being restored back to the gold realm of God. The gold realm of God is with the Holy Spirit not trying to give me enough for bills or enough for resources. He want to give me Surplus. See, surplus money can be unlocked through diligent sewing hands. If I'm diligent in my sewing, I can unlock the surplus of finances. I can't let myself get lukewarm in my sewing. If I get lukewarm in my sewing, it's, it's like... uh. Man, you can get lukewarm in anything. Anything that brings pleasure. You can get lukewarm in anything. If you're playing basketball and you don't stay on fire about basketball, you start becoming a boring basketball player. If you don't get on fire about uh, customer service, you can become a boring customer service rep. McDonald's has got the worst customer service in the world. <laughs> hey, niggas. Niggas, y'all better stop working at McDonald's. Shoot, go to Burger King or son. Always answer, answer in the phone. I'm about to say answer in the phone. Answer, hello. That's all you want. 
I'm not writing that on you, huh? You forgot who I was. <laughs> and then they want to argue with you so they can do something strange to your food. Now, I ain't going to argue with you. I'm going to let you cuss me out on this line, lady. I know I'm the customer, but I'm going to let you do it. All right, can you put the front window? Now, nah, I'm going to put the second window. I don't want to see you. I don't know who you is, B2B. -B. Blessed be his name. Man. I'm going to pull it to the front window. I ain't putting to the front window. You look. You look. You know, I ain't trying to lose my appetite. When was the last time you went to the dentist? Have you on a Dr. Seuss video, girl? Yeah. We're going to buy you a mouth guard like you play football. That's what we're going to do. We're going to buy you a mouth guard like you play football. Get that grill, all that. There ain't going to be no shine. We're going to get you a mouth guard. The one that have you like that. And then they don't even know how to count your challenge. It, it, it's a two. It, it's a two. It's a seven. All right. Uh, okay. It's a seven. Uh, give you back seven, fourteen dollars, seventeen, seven dollars and fourteen cents. You reach out your hand. Give me my change. You pull the change out her hand. She almost jumped into the car. Get out my car. You know, pulled her into the car by uh, uh, by mistake. You know, flew out the window. My mind animated this one. Now look at this here. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 14 says, wise men lay up knowledge. Now you understand why I be telling you I got teachings that I haven't taught yet. Now I tell you why I got stuff inside of me that I haven't released. That's why you hear me talk like that. I got secrets that I haven't even spoke about yet. I'm just waiting for the opportune time. Why? Because it said the wise man lay up knowledge. See, I got knowledge that I lay up. See, that's why wise people, our mind ain't got no time for foolishness. Because we constantly taking up wisdom thoughts and hiding it in our mind. So we don't got no time to think like you. You thinking about foolish stuff, uh, uh, nonsense. We thinking about the knowledge that we got stored up. That's why you see wise, wise people, wise men walk in love. Now I ain't talking about no woman. Forget y'all woman. Uh, wise men walk in love. <laughs> we talking about wise men. What my brothers at? Oh, oh. Wise men walk in love. I'm talking about you females. Wise men. Now, let's go to verse 15. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 15. Look what it say. <laughs> the rich man's wealth is his strong city, but the destruction of the poor is their poverty. Uh-oh. He's telling you something powerful here. That not having not enough money and not enough stuff will destroy you. This another outlook, outlook of this text. This another outlook of this text because what it's letting you know in this text is that if you don't have enough, you can destroy your own self, which is scary. It's very scary because it's taking another angle to the scripture that we haven't seen before. Because we hear that abundance is so bad by religious people that want you to stay broke and these demons of poverty. You got to be careful of these demons of poverty that won't want you to have a trailer mindset because you say that you love Jesus. The more you love Jesus, the more you're going to like nice things. But that should motivate you to be nice in your submission and nice in your obedience and nice in uh, the way that you. Um, be consistent with God. It says the destruction of the poor is their poverty. So poverty will destroy you. Not having enough money and not having enough things will destroy you. Look what they say. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. You know what they're saying right here? It says the rich man's wealth is a strong city. Remember I was talking about how who don't rule their spirit is like a city broken down. A city is representing your place of habitation. The place where you abide. That's why you see people saying this is my city. This is my city. 
is saying this is your habitat. So catch this revelation. The rich man's wealth is his strong habitation. It's his strong location. So in that place where he is, he bossing. La carapa soto. You understand? In the place that he's at, he's dominating. So imagine my carapa correbe. Say, so you catching this it's real heavy while I'm talking about right here. It's telling you in the text that when you get to that realm of wealth, which you should be aiming at. Don't take your time up there telling some you're going to be in school for the next four years. What, where your money at? Where's your money at? No, I'm preparing for a better life. No, where's your money? For four years, you ain't going to have no money. And you're going to be in debt to a system called school and education where you got to buy books. You got to do all this stuff. So you own money. So even when you start making money, you still owe all this money. Dog on it. I wish they'd put a school tab on me. Oh, you owe us this. I need to mess some of y'all up. I ain't get to where I was. I, I ain't get to where I am now through school. I ain't get where I am now through school. And, and, and saints, I ain't learn. I ain't start teaching the word like this through school either. The school will teach you all type of stuff. You get in front of a demon, tells her, "Oh, what am I supposed to do, professor?" Professor say, "Da da da da, a da 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 da." You don't know what to tell you. You get in front of a demon. Demon talks. Arr, arr. Demon doing all type of stuff. You have to talk, uh, professor, what you, professor? Uh, am I supposed to go here or go here? The professor like, I don't know. Uh, where the cross at? Um, the professor done ran out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, because without power, the anointing teaches you all things. That's what First John chapter 2, verse 27 tells us. The anointing teaches you all things. Without the power of Jesus Christ, you can't even have wisdom. So the anointing is the stream of wisdom. So they be ended up all bamboozled. They don't know what to do. Sowing is the power of God for prosperity riches. And as long as you stay on fire about sowing, Jesus can get the money bags to you. He already got angels set up. The minister of finances and the prosperity angels already are a gang of angels. They're a network. Saints, and they such network of angels, they work together. They, they move in order too. None of them disrespect the minister of finances. They flow with the minister of finances. They all in order with the minister of finances. None of them are disrespectful. They don't move at their own will. All of them in order. Prosperity angels, they work together. All of them are in order. All of them flow together. All of them listen to the minister of finances and they get the money to you. They put you in position. So and create money opportunities to get you in position and they take you to a higher level so that you can fly as an eagle, an eagle of wealth, becoming wealth eagles, wealth eagles to the sea, through the sea.